GCA has got a very good name in the industry. There's a lot of talent in the organisation. I think you'll find most GCA people thrive on pressure. Banks in London come, come talk to us because we're Gaffney Klein. Listen, it's a fun place to work to. The breadth the range of uh, capabilities and experience of Gaffney Klein is, is far broader than any of our obvious competitors. The GCA is a unique company. The international oil business is a 90 million barrel a day business, okay? That's, that's a gigantic flow of oil and, and dollars. GCA is very much like an oil company, but without any oil. The fact is that Gaffney Klein cover the full spectrum of what any oil company would do from the exploration and the subsurface through my area, the facilities, and into economics and strategic advisory. We're, we're helping the banks and financial advisors to make sure the the company is valued properly and at the same time what we need to do is to try to protect the potential investors in making sure they get a truly independent opinion of what the company is about and its assets. Gaffney Klein now as it sits is a very diverse organisation. It is still a petroleum consultancy. It provides consulting services to all aspects of the petroleum industry. GCA has got a very good name in the industry and it comes from the two partners. I, I would say it was the charisma of the two partners and the fact that they didn't ask you to do anything that they couldn't do themselves. Classic oil field hands, both those guys. It's where the business is and where it came from. Of course it all really started in a way with Peter and I in the terms of us uh, final, you know, getting together on a business, in a business sense. I first met Ben uh, when we were both seconded to the same joint operation in southern central Venezuela. He from Texaco, in my case from Ultramar. Yeah, because we're, we're quite different, but we share a, a great respect for one another. We began to talk more frequently and finally about um, doing something on our own. Where would be a good place to start? And so we thought, well, we know Venezuela, so let's start in Venezuela. And so we made a tentative application for permission, and they told us we were too young. When 1962 approached, uh, we cut and ran, so to speak, we went to Trinidad from there? We thought it would become an advisory business. Um, the, the, the difficulty was knowing just how it would work and where it, you know, where it would go to. And that had included uh, the abandonment of an offshore well in Trinidad using explosives. And that this Ben Klein did single-handed in a literally little row, rowboat um, and then packing explosives around this well and setting it off. The issues were we had to get permission from the government to get the dynamite. We were asked to go out there and examine it, come up with a program to abandon the well. And, we, and that was fine, and it worked like a dream. And Ben was at a party about four or five or six weeks later. I met a chap who it turned out was an expert in... Um, dynamite or, 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 or offshore cutting and stuff like that. And so Ben told me about it and he asked us, he asked him how much we use. And I can't remember the exact quantities, but he said words to the effect that, you know, I, I think you must have, have uh, used about 10 times more than you needed. How many tons of fish did you kill or something like that? And Trinidad in itself seemed like you know, it was going to go on forever. Of course, we knew better than that in practice. So we were already looking for opportunity that led us outside the discipline range we thought we were in originally and outside the geographic range that we thought we were in. We came to the North Sea largely by accident. Uh, we had one of our clients in the, in the West Indies who wanted us to take on a job, which we did, which was in Syria. And that required us to be running through the the UK pretty often. Because of the, the UK was a natural swing point to the 
Middle East. Oh, it was a very conscious decision early on to go to multiple places and just like multiple disciplines. Our concept was to, to go to the job rather than expect the job to come to us. And that served us extraordinarily well. You know, we went into Singapore before effectively anyone else was there. We, um, we got started in the UK pretty early on, before really anyone had got the same kind of wide-ranging business that we had. In fact, the Singapore office actually handles uh, the Philippines, China, Thailand, the entire Asia-Pacific region. Unfortunately, the oil fields are not selective as to where they locate themselves, so um, you just have to be prepared to go. With offices in different parts of the world, you are able to relate with this customer before you even get a project. There's no doubt at all that having a presence in a region gives one a commercial advantage. It was probably, uh, you know, the mid-70s, actually a little bit later than that, really, uh, before we thought that it might be useful to have a U.S. operation. And uh, so we began to uh, uh, seriously think of opening an office in the United States. And uh, we were driven to Dallas because we had good friends working there. And very early on, we got a fabulous job in New Mexico from a U.S. company that kept us going for a year and was quite unique and we were able to use techniques we'd built in Trinidad and the North Sea. We did have a lot of fun with the communications. We were going to communicate across the Atlantic to our Dallas office for the very first time. We'd always been using telex and fax, um, very old-fashioned fax I might say at that stage, but this was a brand new innovation. We could communicate two typewriters from one side of the globe to the other and that's exactly what we did on that day. And indeed communications in a way we like to believe and I certainly have believed all along it was one of our strengths. I still think there's a role for face-to-face -face meetings particularly in circumstances where you're dealing with, um, with different cultures with people whose first language is not English uh, and where that essence of communication in an initial meeting is so important. We'd been fortunate, I'd been particularly fortunate in my, in my early um, experience because I'd had to work when I was in Venezuela on developing IT and production control systems and, and we'd also done some telecommunications work which had, on gas wells which had worked extremely well. And we, I built the first computer before we came back, a, 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 an analog computer and indeed, we used that for the first couple of projects. And Peter uh, built uh, this uh, kit of, the, of our first computer, which, which is a fabulous little operation. And uh, we used it uh, very successfully, actually uh, used it for our own purposes to do analysis for clients. We actually sold time on it, so other people came in and used it. By the time we got to the early 80s, we had focused a lot of the operation, in, not entirely, but a lot of it in Dallas. Ben and I were both in Dallas by that time, and we were uh, doing work across a broad front from there. Uh, oil price can be quite volatile if it's driven by political events rather than fundamental events. Uh, and what goes up did come down uh, quite quickly. Uh, and the mid-80s was, was a tough time for a lot of the industry. Um, if you were in the States, it was very, very tough in there. The North Sea, for various reasons, was a lot more protected, even though it was a much more expensive area to do things. There were times I didn't think we were going to make it, but we did, through a lot of a great deal of effort on behalf of a lot of people. The other thing that, that helped us, in, in, from a competitive position as well, was that we were faster than anyone else. Um, if we got a call, we usually had somebody on the plane tonight. It didn't matter how far away it was, or how difficult or how big. And uh, frequently that set us apart, um, because the client was anxious, and see somebody turn up the next morning changed his whole uh, perception of the kind of service it got. 
Much of the work I've been doing recently has been in the Middle East or in Central Asia and often working with national oil companies and they have a very different uh, culture and very different um, ethos. When we first uh, went into Mumbai, the production was from Mumbai High Field was, was dropping. Peter Gaffney guided a uh, proposal which was non-compliant to drop a team into ONGC that, that was, we called the Catalyst Team of senior advisors that would provide ONGC with guidance so that ONGC could do the work they wanted to have done. We had several jobs in the early days in the former Soviet Union, uh, both Russia and other, other countries. One of the world-class uh, Arctic Russian oil projects with some of the most breathtaking engineering and geoscience uh, and helping them acquire that asset and then watch it come to fruition. That gave us the, if you like, the confidence to look at other opportunities in the stands and to gradually develop a, a attractive business in the, that region. Working in Russia it was not difficult really, not, not really difficult. They had their own way, but we had our way too. And they were paying for our way, so... For a consulting business, that's the people. As long as they're mobile, you can move from the trough in one area to the peak in another, and you can actually do a, a you know, pretty good business. So, of course, that demands a pretty special person. High integrity, honest, hard, very hardworking people. And uh, we, we're, we're blessed with that. And so over the years, um, we had quite a cross-section of people who, well, let's just call it different. My accounting number was 007 license to drill. It's not, not for linear thinkers, it, it, there is a freedom to think differently. Peter and Ben set that style up as problem solvers, doing what it takes. Working together uh, as a team to put together a product that is the best work that we can do for a client to help them solve their problems in a cost-effective way. I grew up in Gaffney Klein and I was taught from the best and I took in every lesson and I take it on with me. Everyone is encouraged to participate, to air their views, uh, we share the hard times together but also enjoy the benefits. The experience I'm gaining in Gaffney Klein is invaluable. I am working with some of the best experts in the industry. If somebody wanted to join Gaffin Klein, somebody quite young in the business, I'd say uh, make sure your inoculations are up to date and your passport is valid. The idea was that we could provide an opportunity to, for Baker Hughes to do things a little bit differently than their competition and to be seen as different. The acquisition of GCA by Baker Hughes was really something that that changed one part of what we do a lot and created a huge amount of opportunity. The, the flip side, of course, is making sure that we actually work with Baker Hughes and provide them, our parent, the service, the requirement that they need of us. Uh, we are growing at um, a very strong rate at the moment. We're expanding into new markets, new offices. There was a huge opportunity there that new horizons were opening and that there were going to be opportunities to move into different fields. We will be much more heavily involved in integrated projects. But the biggest difference would be the size and scale of what we're doing. And I'd say at the same time, uh, reputationally, we've, we've, we've grown in a, you know, in a, a huge amount. It's growing. The business is definitely growing. We're all feeling it right now. There'd been some pressure to do things differently. And the additional reason was, from my point of view in particular, it was time for me probably to do something different as well. We'd brought along a number of younger people. I mean, they were very capable, capable of running on their own. And um, we were of, of a vintage that would probably best step aside and let them have at it. Peter Gaffney once telling me, we put into your hands the legacy of our company take good care of it. In terms of thinking about the future, 
Did we think forward a long way? No, I, my inclination is that when you're starting, you, th you do think it will last a long time because you do whatever anyone says, start planning in the back of your mind. You know, they say that people that don't remember their history are doomed to repeat it. But in fact, I think if we remember our history, there's a lot of good things that we can take forward. But there's some very important things that we that have been done over the years by Peter and Ben and lots of other people that are, I think, key to the future. And if they're preserved and, and nurtured, that they will really stand the organization in, in good stead going forward.